In this lab, we are going to calculate the density of a assortment of individual cubes. We're going to be using these cubes right here, and we are going to calculate the density uh, by measuring their mass and volume. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we are going to have to measure the mass and volume, or the, the volume of the cube. So the way we do the volume of the cube, this cube is, let's do one that's on this page. Let's do brass. So this cube is copper. And if we measure its length, we find that it has a length of 2. Point, call that 2.5. 2.5 centimeters is the length of one side. Now, if I measure all the sides, I find out that it's a perfect cube. And then I will get the volume in cubic centimeters, so whatever that is. Fifteen point six two five cubic centimeters. So that's the volume for the cube. Now here's the nice thing. Because all the cubes are the same size, it's going to be the volume for every cube. So then the next thing you're going to need is we're going to need the masses of the cubes. So let's start at the top. Aluminum has a mass of 46, 14, or 46.1. The next one is iron, which is 46.1. The next one is copper. Then brass. Then oak. And then we go to the back. Yes, there's a back. So poplar is a type of tree. So that's the name of the wood. Pine, we've heard of, hopefully. Nylon is the type of is a type of plastic that we make clothing out of, but when you see it in a cube form, it doesn't look like anything, anything like clothing. PVC is the stuff we make plumbing pipes out of. Is that those big long white pipes you see at Home Depot? And acrylic is what we make most plastic things. Lots of plastic things, like plastic windows and things like that. Any type of thing that's supposed to look like glass but be plastic tends to be acrylic. Okay, so those are your weights. Hopefully you have them all written down. Now, the volume, again, you know all the volumes. It's going to be the same volume for all of them. Let's go back to the original page, and I'll do one calculation with you. So... For the density calculation, it's going to look like this. Density is what I want. That's my volume. That's my grams. Divide the two, and I will get some number. Nine point four grams per cubic centimeter. Now, for the accepted values, here's the trick. The accepted values we need to get off of this page here. So if we look at this page, this will have all of them on there. So for copper, we don't have a gold cube. Um, the black cube heavy, that's our iron. I don't know why they labeled it that the aluminum. Now, if you look at some of these ones down here, they have ranges. And the reason acrylic has a range and the reason oak has a range is because acrylic is man-made. And so the densities can vary depending on 
how much of each ingredient they, they mix into it. And oak is a tree, it's part of a tree, and that has a range because depending on how the tree grew, it could grow with like finer grains closer together, making it more dense, or if it grew really fast, the grains would be really far apart and it would make it slightly less dense. So what we'll do for these ranges is we're just gonna average these two numbers together. So 1.16 and 1.19, if I take the middle of that, what do I get? 1.175, right? So I would get 1.175, so then I would use that as my middle number, and that would be my accepted value. So you can then write these numbers, they go here, and then you're gonna do a percent error. So for copper, my copper is, the density should be 8.9 grams per milliliter. Now hopefully we remember our chemistry. A milliliter and a cubic centimeter are the same thing, so it doesn't matter if I write this or that. And now I'm gonna set up my percent error. That's what I want. Measure, minus accepted, over accepted, times 100. My accepted value, my measured value, solve for my percent error, show, um, you're gonna have to show all the work on a separate sheet of paper. So this calculation can be done here, but I do wanna see the work for this percent error. So you may, if you can't write small enough, have to put it somewhere else, and then you're gonna do your percent error. Do not forget at the very end, there are two questions. If you have space, you can write them out right under here. If you're doing this in um, the OneNote app or something like that, you can write it right on the page, but the calculations do have to be done um, by hand. It's gonna be very difficult to try to put all these calculations in step-by-step step into the web app, but I'll leave that up to you.